Three years ago, luxury travel agent Roman Chiparuga couldn't sell his clients on a big opportunity a chance to visit the International Space Station. I literally talked to everyone for two years straight telling them about space, and initially the response was, no thank you, I'm not interested. Four, but two years three, later, he sold two, a ticket for $50 one, million. Dollars. Ignition, it, It's a great looking photograph. That trip to the ISS is just one example of a trend that some high-end travel agents are seeing. Their wealthy clients want a dose of adrenaline with their luxury. Here's what's behind the trend and why some experts are concerned about the risks. Tourists have been visiting Antarctica since the 1950s. But in the last few years, companies have built infrastructure to make these trips more appealing to the ultra-rich, like these so-called sky pods. And those experiences that they want to have that prior to the pandemic might not have even been on the radar are now sort of front and center and on the bucket list. The, the concept of YOLO, you only live once, I think has really sort of settled into the mindset of post-pandemic travelers. Tour operator White Desert has built three camps on the continent. The newest can only be reached by private jet. Clients can rappel down cliffs, explore ice caves, and hike among fledgling emperor penguins. So the bucket list trip has become a trip to do immediately, and those folks that have done all of these things are looking for more intrepid and truly unique and enriching experiences. For these travelers, the cost can be over $100,000 for seven days. Uh, both the polar and Antarctic regions are, I would say that they are booming, and it's not just the regions themselves, it's the near Arctic and, and near Antarctic. But the polar regions are under threat from climate change. The world's ice is melting faster than ever. We're finding parts of the ice sheet are melting now uh, and possibly going into irreversible melting. And in 2022, a paper found that each Antarctic tourist corresponds to about 83 tons of snow loss. Some travel agents say that despite risks, clients are looking for the next adventure and more travelers are willing to spend to reach these extreme destinations without the hassle. The CEO of adventure travel company Untamed Borders said one client wanted to climb K2, but didn't have the two weeks it takes to hike to base camp, since private aircraft aren't permitted so close to the disputed border of Pakistan and India, Untamed Borders rented high-altitude helicopters from the Pakistani army. What would have been a 14-day trek took just four hours in the air and cost $40,000. As clients take on more risk, some are seeking extra support from companies that specialize in stepping in when things go wrong. Dan Richards' crisis response company Global Rescue is expecting more than 100,000 calls in 2023, with 2,000 missions and rescues. The company saw 221% growth from 2019 to 2022. Richards warns that travelers should take risks seriously. I think that some of our uh, you know, traveling members have a very firm grip on what the risks might be, but then there are others that get swept up in the excitement of it and don't necessarily consider whether or not they're sort of a good fit for what it might be uh, that they're encountering. And on some of the most extreme trips, tourists are beyond rescue. If you're, you know, 10,000 feet under the ocean or you're, you know, five miles up in the atmosphere, nobody's, we're not only not going to be able to get you, nobody's going to be able to get to you. Richards recommends that travelers do their due diligence. It's wonderful that adventure travel is booming, A. B, I think people really should do their research and do their homework and try and find the experiences that are really good fits for them. Despite the dangers to themselves and the planet, many ultra-wealthy tourists are undeterred. We keep wondering whether or not things are going to start to subside, and the boom just continues. So we're seeing strong growth basically across the entire sector. 